lifting up Jesus and opening his word from Australia, Denmark, Israel, Japan, New Zealand, Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, Singapore, South Africa, United Kingdom, Thailand, the Philippines, United States, and throughout the world. You're watching Morial TV. The eternal existence of the wicked is not found by simile, it's found by direct statement. The smoke of their torment goes up and yow, tau, and yow, nays, forever and ever, eternal conscious damnation. Be careful of the teaching of people like David Reagan, of the late John Stott, of Roger Foster in England and others. That term, enyao tau enyane, is forever and ever. The smoke of their torment goes up forever and ever. Is the same Hebrew idiom for the high priesthood of Jesus, the eternal glory of God and our salvation. Thus, if hell is not eternal and conscious, we have no scriptural basis to say heaven is either. The arguments of people like David Reagan are extremely, extremely poor, doctrinally, theologically, and exegetically. They certainly are not comprehensive. They're teaching error. David Reagan says, that, you know, that, that if, if there's the eternal hell, God is not a God of justice. Now, David Reagan is a teacher of error. He should be ignored. Um, the late John Stott was another perpetuator of this error. When you begin telling unsaved people if they die, they won't exist anymore, or they'll be taken to a place of annihilation and will not exist, that's what they believe anyway. They have no incentive to repent and get saved. <clears throat> the scripture uses fear to cause on people to repent and believe. As in the hymn, it was grace that taught my heart to fear, then grace my fear relieved. God will use fear to drive people to the point of repentance. Then he'll take away the fear once they do repent. Perfect love casts out all fear. When you remove that fear element, you create a disincentive for unsaved people to believe. Do not believe those teaching annihilationism. This is purely a simile. The smoke vanishes, that means it's not going to endure in, in, in earth, in, in time and space, in history, and what they do. But in eternity, that smoke of their torment continues to go up. Every description we have of hell, <clears throat> of Gehenna, of eternal damnation, shows a consciousness, a weeping and a gnashing of teeth. Why would anyone weep and gnash their teeth? Again, it is, it's simply using symbolic language. But why would people weep and gnash their teeth if they're not conscious? Um, they're obviously going to be conscious of their judgment and of their exclusion from the presence of God. No, it does not teach that. We need to look at a subject text, context, context. Looking at the text in context, we have to understand what literary genre it is, and if it is using metaphor, if it is using simile, here it is using a literary simile, simply a this is like that, but not that this equals that or this is the same as that. It's simply the language of analogy to explain how something works, but it does not speak to the eternal consciousness or lack of consciousness of non-believers. Thank you so much for your question. My name is Jacob Prash. God bless.